Hi, it's Kate Stillman, and welcome back to the Body Goals Crash Course. Today's lesson is on the inflammation calculator and how to actually calculate the cost of inflammation. And it's it's not a it's not like a fun, sexy lesson. Um, it's actually something that's extremely hard to do. There's not just the cost of inflammation, but there's also the opportunity cost. Uh, so for some people, again, if we look at like too much on the mind, there's opportunity costs in terms of uh, what is the cost of anxiety? What is the cost of depression? What is the cost of irritability or of the, of the mental stressors? On the too much in the body, it's actually a little bit easier to measure in terms of how much does it cost to carry more weight. And with weight in the holistic perspective, the holistic health perspective, weight isn't neutral. Weight is a load on the physiology. It's actually toxicity is what weight is. It's not just neutral energy. It's not energy in storage. There's a better understanding of this now in allopathic medicine as well with how having uh, fat that's not being digested by the body that's in storage, right, is not actually just in storage. It's actually putting off uh, adipokines, which are toxic uh, hormones that start to disrupt not just the physiology, but also cognitive function. So we're able to think less clearly. It leads to neurodegeneration or where our nerves aren't firing the way they're designed. So what we see is that there's an overall load on the body. So in terms of like, what does it actually cost? There was a study done at Cornell University that moderately overweight, meaning only 15 pounds overweight, uh, women earn on average $9,000 less per year than her thinner sisters and very overweight women, which is 25 pounds or more, earn 14 to $19,000 less per year. Now that cost, if you think about like what that cost actually is, is it's a, it's a cost that it's a year over year over year cost. Now, I don't know about you, but I if I'm getting smarter and better at doing my job, I want to have a raise year over year over year. And as an employee of Yoga Healer, I give myself a raise based on my performance, right? So performance-based pay. So part of the problem is, is there's discrimination. The other part of the problem is, is that because cognitive dysfunction happens with inflammation, with chronic inflammation, we're not actually able to perform at the level that we might want to be able to perform at. And that's really, and that's really scary. So the other thing, I'm going to read a little bit from, from Forbes. This is a Forbes magazine article um, on, on employers' concern around the cost of obesity in the workplace. So in the United States, about a third of adults are obese. About another third are not obese but are overweight. And about a third are at um, optimal body weight. We can now, and I want to say it clearly, we can be at optimal body weight and still have chronic inflammation. We have a lot of people come into Body Thrive and into our Living Ayurveda course who have chronic inflammation and who are not overweight. So that aside, we're going to talk about obesity. Obese employees cost U.S. private companies an estimated $45 billion annually in medical expenditures. That's that's B. That's money with a B. Um, in medical expenditures and work loss. So that's interesting to look at. Like, what is the cost per employee for if they're uh, at their normal body weight or obese? And what medical claims cost per 100 employees that were obese was $51,000 per annum compared with $7,500 for the non-obese. So we're looking at 7,000 versus 51,000 in medical costs. Now, medical costs are one thing, and, and you might, you know, even if you have chronic inflammation and you have good medical coverage, you might think it's not really costing me anything, but it really is. It's costing your quality of life. It's costing you how you're experiencing yourself every day. And there's articles when I was doing some research on this, just in terms of like, what does it really cost? Like, can your weight hurt your opportunity costs? Um, and obviously there's these numbers then just in terms of the discrimination. Uh, and then some of that is, is companies just trying to actually stay in business and knowing that the cost of medical care could actually take them under, in some cases. Uh, there's also the opportunity cost. We, 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 um, some, some research has been done around like when we're overweight, we don't feel as confident in ourself. And that is often the issue behind the issue is the insecurity. And so there's a cost to not feeling good. There's an, a cost to not being in a place of honoring yourself, feeling successful, being promoted, being well paid and honoring yourself. Like that's really, that's really the start of better 
habits over time. It's like you're honoring that your goals have a value, even if you failed at reaching those goals before because you haven't looked at your critical issues. And that's really where we left off in the last lesson. So next what we'll do is just look at how do you actually calculate the cost of inflammation so that you can understand where your money is going, that it wouldn't go if you didn't have chronic inflammation, and therefore where that surplus you could put into deeper life goals and into even better opportunities for your future. So the goal in this body goal crash course is to help you calculate the cost of inflammation. And this is really not that easy to do. So we're going to look at a, a number of different factors in terms of how you're, how you're spending money and what the opportunity cost is. And I'm going to do just, again, a quick review. So inflammatory disease, we have uh, three out of five people dying of chronic disease, right? But then the, the thing isn't just death, right? It's like how you feel. And so the percentage of Americans with chronic condition uh, in 2014 was uh, at least one was 60%, with more than one was 42%, and five or more is 12%. And these projections are, from the World Health Organization, are um, estimated to get worse over the next 30 years. So it's not like we're heading towards better, which means that often our children have inflammation, our parents have inflammation, and we may have inflammation. So we've already gone over the health issues. The emotions of inflammation, overwhelmed, irritability, and blah, they have a, a real cost. One of the costs, if we just look at the inflamed versus the fasters, is the inflamed, right? So those who have chronic inflammation, they have, and I just talked about this, this cognitive complacency um, and insulin resistance. There's disengagement of adaptive signaling pathways, meaning that the way that our physiology is meant to adapt and signal through our, um, through our neurology, that that becomes more disengaged. Whereas on the other side, and this is looking at the fasters or people who have the habit of intermittent fasting, which we coach everyone through in Body Thrive, um, you actually have intensified cognition. You have ketones. You may have heard of the keto diet. That's a, just a naturally occurring process that happens. You don't have to be on a keto diet. All you have to do is have intermittent fasting and bam, you get ketones. You get adaptive cellular signaling. So your physiology is way more adaptive. Your cells are able to signal what they need uh, from each other and do their jobs. Uh, you have mitochondrial adaptation, enhanced DNA repair, oxidative enzymes, reduced inflammation, and autophagy. That's all happening on the side of what we do with the Body Thrive Habits. On the inflamed side, you have oxidative damage. You have damage to the mitochondria, the little energy producers within your cells. You have impaired DNA repair. So you're, if your cells are going to mutate, right, you have an increased chance of that with inflammation. And you have an excitatory imbalance, meaning that you're in a stress state. You're in a distressed state. Whereas on the other side, you're actually in a eustress state where you're using positive stressors. So on one side, you've got neuroplasticity. On the inflammation side, you've got neurodegeneration and neurodysfunction and suboptimal cognitive function. And you're more, in, you're more vulnerable to injury and disease. So there's a cost to that. And the problem is, is we don't actually look at the cost. If we see in the emotional body that there's clear signs, there's clear signs that there's actually a good book called Emotional Inflammation um, that goes deep into this. The emotions of people that have the use stress habits, one of which is intermittent fasting, is you see stability, sensitivity, focus, you see uh, basically people having a better time and feeling more balanced, more relaxed, more in charge of their own life. And this is important to realize that there's just truly a cost to distress, distraction, uh, brain fog, and overwhelm. So if we go into how do you actually change your thinking, how do you actually change your thinking to change the opportunity so you can step into the opportunity of feeling good and change the result, which is feeling good? Because when you feel good, that actually changes your thinking into how, you know, what else do I want to do with my life now that I can step into more opportunity? And as you do that, it actually changes your opportunity in the future. And that's really why we do what we do um, in the Body Thrive course is because, you know, we see massive results and uh, we see that people really have a much bigger future than, than they had. Uh, all right, so if we look at the inflammation calculator, right, what we're looking for is like what are the habits that are working against you and what are the costs of those habits? So I just have some ideas down here. This is something that we see repetitively with people that go through our year-long Body Thrive courses. It saves them money. And where are they finding it saves them money? We've, they find that 
they spend less money in retail therapy. They're just like wasting less money on just consumerism, just consumer goods that seem fun. When you're in an inflamed state, it gives you temporary relief. Well, when you're not in an inflamed state, you don't need that temporary relief. So you're not like buying more of what you already have. Um, those might be for some people, it's clothes. For some people, it's tech gadgets. For some people, it's just, you know, it's more food. And so then there's food waste. For some people, it's eating out a lot. Uh, that makes them feel temporarily better or like they deserve, you know, a reward for not feeling good. And so they, they put money into things that if they didn't feel bad, they just wouldn't put money into. And that is, it is so hard to do because it's so hard to recognize, uh, alcohol too, which might be, you know, if you, if you drink a, you know, if you drink a couple bottles of wine a week or a six pack of good IPA beer, every week or, or maybe a few or whatever, like what you might find is that you don't want to give up those habits, right? So you don't want to put those on the expense side. It's just, if you are feeling really good, and this is what we find, if we were feeling really good, we cut way back on food waste. We cut way back on eating out just because there's a natural joy of preparing good food for yourself. It doesn't mean you don't eat out at all. It just means that I uh, probably less, way less money into packaged food uh, or processed food. And then obviously the big ones, and these are really the big ones, is like, is what is the opportunity cost in terms of your emotions, in terms of your health, in terms of your health care, where are you putting money into health care, both holistic and Western or allopathic. And then where might your, if you have income plateau, you actually want, you do want to put those numbers in, uh, cost of inflammation. I would, I would use per 15 pounds, $9,000 per year. It seems like that's a decent enough measure. Uh, and, and just start to give yourself a good tally, like find out actually what is inflammation costing you. Um, our team will also help you that with that in the coaching session. And just know that as you change your thinking, you change your opportunity. So with this exercise, I really want to push you, change your thinking about how is inflammation costing you and, and what is it costing you? And can you put dollar amounts to that so that you at least know what kind of money is on the table here?